In this video, I'm gonna outline what may be the most successful Forex trade of all time, a legendary Forex trader that made over a billion dollars in a single day shorting the great British pound. Not only did he make a billion dollars, but he almost single-handedly managed to crash an entire country's economy. While what I'm gonna be talking about throughout this video may be controversial to some, it's going to have great insight, especially if you're a Forex trader. This is important history that you absolutely must know. And I'm gonna explain this all using this little marker and some really ugly drawings to help make it a little bit simpler. Okay, so let let me explain how George Soros made over a billion dollars shorting the pound back in the 90s. To give you an idea of the context of the story, this is all pre-Euro. So as we know, the Euro is basically a bunch of countries came together under this one single currency. Now, before the Euro ever came into introduction, we did have this Second World War, right? Which essentially during the Second World War, we kind of had these two players, right? We had the Axis and we had the Allies. And essentially, the Axis was made up of uh, Germany, it was made up of Italy, and it was made up of Japan. And then on the other side, we had the Allies, which were made up of France, it was made up of Great Britain, it was also made up with the United States of America, and also the Soviet Union. Now, after this Second World War actually happened, basically, all of these European countries came together and they're like, hey, we can't have that happen again. This was basically all these countries in close proximity that were fighting each other bombing each other like tons and tons of people were dying and they're like we can't have this happen again and so essentially what they did is they went out and they formed this thing called the ERM which basically st stands for the exchange rate mechanism and basically what this is it was a fixed rate that would uh, be held together amongst these European countries, meaning that the exchange rate wasn't so volatile. It had to stay within this certain range in comparison to the other countries' currencies, because again, this was prior to the Euro. So all of these countries, they still had their own currency in this ERM system, which it was fixed. So meaning that the exchange rate would always be very similar from one country to another. And basically the way that this worked was that, <clears throat> let's say that too many people were buying a certain uh, currency, then and that means that the central bank of that currency would go in and they'd have to sell off some of their reserves in order to keep this fixed range of the exchange rate amongst different countries. Now, while this sounded like a good idea in theory, it did have their own flaws because all countries have their own uh, differences in economic growth, they all have different interest rates, and they all have different scenarios happening with inflation. So the prime minister of uh, Great Britain at the time was this lady and her name was uh, Margaret Thatcher. And she basically knew that this, a system that was not going to work. And so she basically said that, hey, uh, you know what? We're not going to join this ERM system and we're just gonna continue to have our Great British Pound. So what happens is the Great British Pound and the Great Britain economy starts tanking and it starts doing uh, really bad during like the 1990s, right around like 1990, basically. And uh, a lot of people started to think that, well, the economy's doing really bad because we decided to say no to this ERM system. And that's the reason why the economy is doing bad. So this guy comes and his name is uh, John Major. And he comes in, he runs against the existing prime minister on this theory that, hey, if we just get into this ERM system, then the economy will completely recover. And so he eventually gets to persuade the English people and essentially he gets elected. So this was back in 1990 when uh, Great Britain decided to join the ERM system. Now, remember during this time when they're joining, the Great British economy is also going through a recession. Now, commonly during a recession, one of the things that central banks will do is they will essentially lower interest rates, which will make money less expensive in order to stimulate economic activity. But they couldn't actually lower interest rates because the Great British Pound was already really weak. And the UK at the time had an inflation rate three times greater uh, than that of Germany. 
So in theory, cutting interest rates would help the economy, but at the same time, it would also devalue the currency. So this wasn't an option. And the reason it wasn't an option because it would lower the value of the Great British Pound. In a sense, it would cut this fixed rate that they had to maintain and they'd be forced to leave the ERM. So from the period of about 1990 to 1992, the British economy was really um, in a suffering state. And essentially what was happening is in order to try and prop up their currency, the Bank of England was out there basically buying millions and millions of the Great British Pound in an attempt to keep the price high enough. So that way they could stay in this ERM. However, the pound continued to suffer in devalue and devalue. At the time, they were at the risk of staying within this range and leaving, uh, being forced to leave the ERM. And so along comes this guy by the name of George Soros, okay? And George Soros basically was a hedge fund manager that saw that the Great British Pound was weak and he still thought that it was overvalued and so he put a plan together. And basically, he knew that at some point the Great British Pound was going to completely collapse and he just wasn't sure when it was going to happen and a lot of people, a lot of speculators around the world also knew that this was going to happen but they just didn't know when it was going to happen. And so George knew that that all we needed was we needed some sort of like breaking news headline that came out. And once this happened, the whole world would kind of panic. They'd sell off Great British Pounds and uh, the pound would continue to suffer and collapse. So in 1992, George Soros and his fund, he basically started shorting the Great British Pound and essentially what he would do is he would go out to other funds and he'd also go out to other banks and he'd say, hey, give me this money, you know, I'll pay you your interest rate. And what he was doing was he was getting that money and he was shorting the Great British Pound and in turn, so essentially he was selling uh, the GBP and he was buying. So essentially what he's doing was going and borrowing Great British Pounds and he was selling them off. And in exchange, what he was doing was he was buying the German Mark. And his whole theory and idea was, is that he would continue to short this and eventually the pound would crash and he'd be able to buy back the pounds and he'd be able to make a bunch of money doing this. So by the time that August rolls around, he had actually built up a short position about, about $1.5 billion for money that he'd raised through his fund and through other banks and through other funds that he'd raised money from. Even though he had shorted the Great British Pound $1.5 billion, it hadn't really changed the value of the pound. And again, what he needed was he needed this really, really bad news to come out. And as soon as that came out, he believed that the pound would crash. So the following month, in the month of September, uh, there's an interview with this gentleman who was the head or the president of this bank called Bundesbank. And basically he says that, he said, doesn't rule out that some currencies might come under pressure. And Soros saw this interview and he thought, hey, you know what? This is good enough bad news. If this really gets out, then this can really change the game and this can collapse the currency. So George goes off and he increases his position overnight. He calls around banks from around the world and he increases his position to $10.5 billion that he is shorting the Great British Pound knowing that this interview is about to come out. So here's what happened. He shorts $10 billion worth right, of the Great British Pound. And what happens is the currency starts to lose its value, especially in combination with that interview with the president of that bank that comes out and people start freaking out and everyone starts selling Great British Pounds and the Bank of England doesn't know what to do. Uh, the Bank of England is in complete chaos. They're like, holy crap, our currency is being devalued too much and we're gonna be forced to leave the ERM. The chancellor at the time does is he goes out there and he buys $1 billion worth of the currency in an attempt to prop it up, right? He buys a billion dollars worth of the Great British Pound. Again, George Soros alone had shorted the Great British Pound over $10 billion. So this doesn't happen. He then goes out and he goes and attempts and he buys another $2 billion worth of the Great British Pound in an attempt to prop it up. And at the same time, he's like, crap, this isn't working. So he goes in there and he increases the interest rates on an emergency basis by 2%. I believe he interest rates raised from 10% to 12% initially, which is a massive jump in just a period of a day. And still they weren't able to defend the currency. All the meanwhile, the Great British Pound is losing value like crazy. And eventually they go off to buy 27 billion 
worth of the great british pound and they do something crazy that's never really been done in history they raise the interest rates from 10 percent then they raise it to 12 percent and then they raise it to 15 percent all in the matter of one day sold 10 billion dollars alone worth of the great british pound and all of the world was kind of following suit uh seeing that the currency was collapsing everybody else started doing the same thing so in this same day later at night at about 7 30 p.m the bank of england essentially comes out and they wave the white flag and they basically surrender and say that they are forced to essentially leave the ERM. Now, over the course of the next few days, what happens is the Great British Pound falls 15% to the German mark, and it also falls 25% to the US dollar. And meanwhile, while all this happens and the currency is collapsing and falling, George Soros goes on and he pockets $1 billion. Now, while this is a really controversial idea because you know, he basically profited $1 billion at the expense of a lot of the uh, British people. So there's a lot of controversy over, you know, whether this was ethical or not. But what really happened was over the course of the next few years, uh, they are forced to leave the ERM. England, the Bank of England goes off and they start cutting interest rates and basically stimulating economic activity. And then before you know it, a few years later, actually the uh, Great British Pound was stronger than ever before, even before they ever even joined the ERM. This was a catastrophic event for the entire bank, collapsing the entire bank. At the same time, the currency eventually ended up coming back even stronger than before. Hey, and if you found this video helpful, like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and check out some of the other helpful videos that are on the screen right now.